Banished from Earth Classic Game Room broadcasts from the Intergalactic Space Arcade on its never-ending mission to review everything. What's bright and orange and plays video games? The Sun, also my PS Vita. Let's give it a classic game room review. It's Vita time. EDF, EDF. Ah, I'm being eaten by a giant insect, but it's on the Vita, so that's okay. Welcome to my PlayStation Vita review, a bright orange one, no less. I was at the Sony press conference in 2011 when they announced this thing. I'll never forget it because they got up on stage and there's lasers and lights everywhere. And one of the Sony guys is like, our new handheld is called the PlayStation Vita. And everyone's like, yay, what? Why? Why would you voluntarily call it that? No, no, give, give it a different name. But before the crowd could get really rowdy, they one-upped the damage and admitted the wireless connection was with AT&T and that just got booed off the stage. The Vita has had a rough ride from the beginning. It's got a silly name, it's expensive, the memory card is ridiculously expensive, and it was obsolete the moment it came out. That being said, it may be the nicest handheld game system I've ever seen. Everyone likes the Vita, yet so few people have one. I think it's karma. Sony? You killed my beloved Dreamcast. Well, Apple, Samsung, and Nintendo killed your Vita. That and your stupid overpriced proprietary memory card. Here's the thing, you deserve it for that one. That was dumb. I can't even get it out of the Vita for this shot. 200 bucks for the Vita? That's not too bad. It's a really nice handheld. 40 bucks for your stupid proprietary memory card? And that's just the 16 gig card? Why don't you try to shove a Betamax player in there, Sony? It's so typical of them. Sometimes it works for Sony, sometimes it doesn't, but in this case, they were literally nailing the coffin door shut the moment this was released. I think it's ironic that Sony, whose hands are still dripping wet with blood from the Sega Dreamcast, released the next Sega Dreamcast, and this is it. The Vita. It shares so much in common. It's a great piece of hardware that is beloved by everyone who owns it. I mean, have you, have you played a Vita? It's great. There's nothing bad that you can say about this beyond the price and the stupid name. It's a commercial disaster, just like the Dreamcast. It has a great game library, just like the Dreamcast. And even though it's on the decline, the games seem to get better and better, just like the Dreamcast. I'm playing Killzone Mercenary here, one of the early Vita titles, a real showpiece for what the Vita can do. And I think it's pretty remarkable that the game looks about as good as it does on the Vita on an 80 inch screen. Definitely one of the best Killzone games, but the first person shooter genre is not really what handhelds do well. I think games that have simpler control schemes play better on handheld game systems. Which makes the Vita ideal for the 2D platformer genre like Shovel Knight. Or one of the many JRPGs available for the PlayStation Vita, even though what we're watching here is Tales of Zestiria on the PlayStation 4 using the Vita's remote play feature. One of its best features that Sony completely failed to market properly. I thought this was going to be a bit of a gimmick until I used it and realized it's wonderful to be able to control your PlayStation 4 with your Vita wherever you are, as long as there's a good internet connection. This doesn't work real well for all of the PlayStation 4 games, but it works well for a lot of them. In fact, many of the PS4 releases will say whether or not it's ideal for remote play on the back. Drive Club works really well. Alien Isolation works pretty well. I did find the Wi-Fi connection to be not quite as good as a lot of other devices, though. Yeah! How about some Battlefront? Oh yeah, that works pretty well. Blowing up things with an A-Wing on the Vita. Woo! Stealing is stealing. Shut up, old man. You smell like farts. 
And enjoying PlayStation 4 games on my Vita has to be one of its greatest features, but you need a really strong Wi-Fi signal and fast internet to do it. It's so incredible, in fact, that it's easy to just forget that the Vita has a bunch of games exclusively for the Vita, too, in addition to all the PlayStation 4 stuff. There's loads of great Vita games, as you just saw, including God Eater 2, Muramasa Rebirth, and there's a ton of Japanese imports, so if you like Japanese games, you'll like the Vita. There's no region encoding, and this is a Japanese Vita, by the way, but you can just change the language. There's no problem. I like the orange one, I figured it would look pretty cool on screen. These days you can find a number of used Vitas online. They changed screens moving into the second model. I have the PCH-2000, a lot of people seem to prefer the 1000 screen. I'm perfectly happy with mine though, to be honest, I've enjoyed the Vita more than I thought I would. It has a nice touch screen on the front, some games use it, some don't. It has touch panels on the back, which seem kind of unnecessary to be honest. And uh, make sure when you're buying games, some of them like Wipeout 2048 work on the Vita, but not the PlayStation TV. Which is like a consoleized Vita, I'll, I'll review that soon, I have one now. Others like Killzone Mercenary and EDF play just fine on PlayStation TV. And God Eater 2, even though I'm just figuring out how to play it. The Vita. I think they originally claimed during that press conference that it stood for life. Maybe what they meant to say was that the Vita has a life after death. Because prices are dropping and there's more and more great Vita games being released. But does that even matter when you can play Earth Defense Force 4.1 on it really well? And there's Earth Defense Force 2 on the Vita? Seriously? How can you not want one of these? It'll also remote control your PlayStation 3. Although it didn't seem to work with any of my PS3 games, it works really well with the PlayStation 1 games played on PS3 though. And there's a lot of them, so that's good. That means you can enjoy Gran Turismo 2, Front Mission 3, Grandia, lots of good PS1 games. And this works with PS Now. Now. Then. Just that you just missed it. I see. So the humanoid boy escaped. So far, so good. Yes, Colonel, but... <laughs> what is it, Lean? What is the, this is the voice from the game. Nothing, nothing at all. Very well, Lieutenant Avnana and the others trail the boys' plans. I should really be hired to do these. The only handheld I've ever seen which gives this a run for its money is the Sega Nomad, because it has blast processing. The Vita is remarkable. It has a wonderful screen, incredible game library, especially when you take the PS4 and the PlayStation 1 games into account. The thumbsticks, d-pad, and buttons are all pretty good once you get used to them, and the only real annoyance is that stupid memory card, but once you buy it and install it, you'll probably never think about it again. And you know why? Because you'll be too busy playing EDF, and God Eater 2, and all of the other great games on the Vita. It even has a good battery life, because the Vita means life. After death, after you get stomped on by giant robots and eaten by space bees. EDF. Welcome to the club, it's the Lord Carnage Club, where I give thanks to these backers on Patreon, starting with Jeff, Jeff Captain, Captain Dauntless Breyer, Ohad Kane, Jack Stavris, from Australia, Philip Michael Stiles, of Ortona, Philip Straubenmuller, of Vienna, Austria, Landon Ellerby, Justin, Justin Duran. Duran from Palm Desert, California. Steve Chucknick from New Jersey. Sean Zoltek. Rick DeBarros. Pimp Trex. Al Stiver. Chip Sankbell. Shadow Minion. For Lord Carnage. Busy Signal. Jason from Kamloops, British Columbia. Will. Zach Brenner, Sergio Matthias Hergers, Jim Moriarty, Rob from Palmerston North, New Zealand, Kishore Ken, Soft Otaku. See you next time on Classic Game Room, Mark III.